What's going on, guys? Welcome into episode number 61 of the Ask Tony Show. Thank you guys so much for being here. This conversation, guys, is a conversation that I've been waiting for for months. For months. And so I have one of my favorite people that I have met over the last 12 months. I've met a lot of people. But this is one of my favorite people that I've met, guys. And I'm not just saying that because she's sitting right in front of me. I would say that's anyone. It's one of my favorite people. Tracy Robbins King. Tracy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Tony. That is such a flattering introduction. I thank you. Thank you so much. No, absolutely. So just to give you guys a little bit of context, Tracy is a member of our Utah Podcast Coalition. So you guys have heard me talk about it. Yeah, I posted it on social media. But the idea behind the coalition is to build a network of podcasters, new or old, experienced or brand new, and just create a community where people can come, they can learn, they can, you know, just yesterday we had a meeting, we learned about sponsorships, we've learned about social media, marketing, we've learned about all these different things. And so Tracy was at one of our first meetings. And so I remember driving to that meeting, I was talking to Stephanie, who is the president of the coalition. And we we're saying, you know, maybe we should do some sort of giveaway. Maybe we should do something, right? And I was like, ah, I don't know. And Steph was like, well, can you grab something? So I, I swung by Best Buy and I grabbed a podcasting kit and a mic. So we came, we had the meeting, Tracy was there. And so Tracy, tell us a little bit about that, that meeting, what you were feeling, what happened that day? So Steph had helped me start a podcast uh, in 2018, in December of 2018. And I had run five or maybe seven episodes of that. And then I had dropped off the wagon and stopped doing it. But when I came to the coalition, she's like, you got to come, come to the podcast coalition. And I, I said, okay, I'll come. And I came and I was kind of experiencing just that feeling of, I'm a fake, you know, and I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here because I show up places. And so I I came and as a result of that, Steph said to me, I, I came and as I watched the whole, I listened to the whole thing and I was like, you know what? And I'm sitting there and I'm praying. I'm saying, Heavenly Father, if this is the right thing for me to do, like if I need to keep on pursuing this, I'm like, it'd be really nice if I won that podcast kit. Like, that'd be great. And of course, there's not really a lot of people either, but I was the first name that was drawn out. And she won the podcast. And I won the podcast kid. It felt like just this like push, you know, it felt like a push in the right direction. And I feel like that really was kind of the sign or whatever I needed to be like, just go start again. Even if you've fallen off, get back on. So that's that story. Yeah, no. And just to see, and I remember, I remember clearly your face lit up. You were so excited. And so that's kind of what I wanted to, to talk to you about, Tracy, because the growth that I have seen in you from just that first meeting where you were, you were timid, like you said, you had imposter syndrome, you know, you probably felt like everyone in the room was an absolute rock star. And you were, I mean, I've, I've, I've felt that way before, right? I think that we've all had those situations where you're in a room and you're like, I am just, I'm just a small little ant here. Like I don't deserve to be here. I know I have felt that way, but to now where, you know, you're, you know, bringing people to the coalition, you're saying hi to everyone, you're networking. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, number one, your show and what has happened with your show from then to now, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of the concept behind that. But what have you felt has been some of those key growth factors that have happened over the last eight months so i would say first off it it goes back to being removing barriers so i'm a big i'm a big proponent of knowing what your weaknesses are so that you can get through them and i realized that the only way i was going to probably be successful this second round of podcasting was to actually come up with something that was going to help me edit my software like I just needed a better so uh, editing software and so I, f I discovered Ollie 2 I don't know if you've heard of it but anyway it's a software that basically you upload your audio and then you can edit it from there and they do all of your levels so, so they just help figure out your levels and I figured that out and then I discovered that I could just use Zoom and it was just so much easier and they were just kind of like I just had to figure out ways that I could remove barriers because even people are like, well, I don't have the equipment. I don't have the microphone. And my thought is you don't really need it. 
you just need a computer and you need somebody else to have a device and you need to be able to record it on Zoom. <laughs> and basically, you can have an audio file if you want to. You just press record and then you can find ways. And so I just realized I needed to remove the editing struggle, which was just cleaning up my audio. So then once I found that, it was like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. And I feel like that gave me more momentum to be more consistent because then I had the confidence that I could actually turn the podcast as quickly as I wanted to because you might want it. You're like, I want to create credibility for myself and I want to be consistent. And if I'm going to be consistent, how am I going to do that? And then also Steph showed me Calendly. She taught me how to set up you know, a link that I can just share with people and they can book whenever they want based on the hours I've set for them. And I mean, that like empowered me a ton. To be, and then I started to shoot texts to all these different people and saying, hey, book my, and when, and if people want to do it, they will. And if they don't, they, they don't, right? And so it just leaves a lot like in there, but at least you've asked and followed up. And it helped me to have conversations with people that I haven't had conversations with in a while. It allows connections. And it's just so fun to talk to people and it hear is. their story and, and gain their perspective on life that you're just like, I feel alive. Like, I feel alive again just by talking to this person. And so I think finding the joy in it as well because there is joy in it, but a lot of the joy comes from when I share it. I mean, this is, I share it with my mom and my mom listens to all my podcasts and um, and I feel like she'll tell me things like, I didn't like the title of that one, but I was surprised by how good it was. Yeah. And so I've gotten different feedback also because my mom will be honest with me to some degree as well, which I'm grateful for. But then I feel like there's just been so much gained by removing the hurdles so that I can do it. And I think I'm still working on, I'm definitely still working on that. Like right now, I feel like I've just encountered another hurdle this week because I, po I podcasted it again with somebody and I just, it's the, um, the editing part portion of it is like, I'm trying to figure out how to get that so that the time isn't so intensive. Right. 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 So I could just do raw and just be like, Hey, here it is. Boom. You know, but uh, I haven't done that yet. So maybe that'll be my next step. For sure. No. And there's, there's always going to be a hurdle, right? But for, for those in the audience, there's so much to that story. Right. And I feel like a lot of folks, they don't make that breakthrough of your first step, what you mentioned, right? You have to accept and understand your weaknesses. Like, where are you not so good? Because once you have that, and once you can solve that to whatever degree you can, even though it's not 100% like, and you said it, it gives you confidence. And so that confidence then leads to the next thing, which is, okay, now I can make phone calls. Or now, okay, now, now I know I can at least edit. So now you feel more confident having someone on your show. And then you do it once, twice, you know, three times. But so many people I feel get stuck in that first step. Oh, 100% I would say that is always the hardest step. The hardest step is like, what is the next thing? So I feel like as long, as long as you can break it down, so you can say like, here's the hurdle. I want to start a podcast. Okay, what's the first thing you need to do to be able to start a podcast? One, what are you going to podcast about? Like your idea, you need to come up with some idea. So my idea, I'm an interview podcast and I interview people in my day-to-day -day life who are crushing it and making the world a better place to live, which means anyone mm -hmm. can basically come on my podcast who I have come in contact with can but i, come I want on your podcast? yeah i would love for you to come on the podcast <laughs> yes will you please yes. will you come yes. on and so i mean but just like being able to get this this idea of like getting people that i don't think otherwise i maybe would have had a conversation with and like just discovered the jewels of these people and part of what i love about it is some of these people people are just like you're on a podcast? I want to hear your podcast. Like, I want to listen in. And a lot of people just love the ordinary. But I would say, you know, that first step is like, okay, once I have discovered this is what I'm going to do, I think sometimes that idea can really percolate for a long time sure. before you actually start to be like, I'm going to move. But I would actually say move, moving is better than not moving. Absolutely. So like always, you know, momentum is your most powerful friend. So if you don't really know, do a, do an interview. Just try it. Write a right? write a solo cast. Like do something that's gonna like you know what I mean. Yeah. Do something to give yourself the momentum of being like I have tried this and I'm working on it. So what name what what needs to happen next, right? Yeah. And if you're committed to it, then you you just you make it better. You make your product better day in and day out. Now one of the things that has really helped me is to surround yourself with the right people. Because, and I've, I, I mentioned this often to the coalition that podcasting for a lot of folks is very lonely because 
if if you do an interview show, you might you know see one person. Most people don't do an interview show because they're afraid of the whole process. So most podcasts are just solo cast, which it's just you in a room with a mic. And when you first start out, you have three listeners, and one is your mom, and the the other one is you, right? And so there's there's a lot of loneliness when it comes to this particular thing. But what I found, and one of the reasons why I love the coalition so much, is because you surround yourself with people that have the same goal. So you've mentioned you've mentioned Steph that she showed you things. So talk to us a little bit about that. Talk to us a little bit about those relationships and how being part of a community has benefited you to make you not only a better podcaster, but a better individual. So I'm a huge believer in community and I did the podcast coalition speaker last month and I spoke on the topic of co-signing on people's goals. And the whole concept behind that is that we support each other by saying, what do basically a co-signer they can't get across the finish line and buy that house without somebody co-signing they can't do it right. it's literally not going to happen without somebody else putting their effort into their mm. pr to their goal and so i think the same idea with some of us we're just there's too many hurdles and so we need somebody to sit down and be like hey let me show you what 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 software i recommend what's free what's easy what's difficult, what I've learned, like, and that's what happened. Steph, literally the first time I pu published my first podcast back in December of 2018, Steph came to my house on a Saturday. She said, how close are you? I said, oh, and she's like, I'm coming over. She came over and she spent four hours with me uh -oh. figuring out how to get from the audio I had recorded and the my little JPEG file with my, you know, my PNG or whatever with my, um, my, my, what is that? My logo. <laughs> anyway, my logo and all that. And she just said, let's just, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Okay. This is how you submit. This is how you get on. And I used Podbean, but you can use like anchor for free, right? Anchor yeah, FM use, is free. We use anchor. Yeah. Anchor is free. So, I mean, I would want to give people those t tips. Like you don't have to pay for anything right. past your fifth episode or whatever it may be. So I would want to give people those tips as well. But I'm just saying like, I really feel like it was Steph coming and being like, okay, you don't know how to do this. So I'm going to literally tell you where to click. <laughs> and once we did that, I published my podcast. Right. And like two days later, it was live on Apple, you know, on iTunes. Yeah. And I just was like, that's my it's podcast. There. <laughs> I did that. And I remember one of the greatest pieces of joy for me was that I was actually taking Photoshop at Salt Lake Community College. And so I made my own little logo thing. Yeah. And I like love it. Like even to this day, I love that I created that. And so I'm a huge proponent of creation because I feel like when you're creating something, there is a level of satisfaction that can come into your life that I would say you can be successful and completely unsatisfied. Oh, a thousand percent. And, and then you're like, what's wrong? What's missing in my life? Why do I have all this stuff that would say I'm successful, but I'm totally unsatisfied. And the truth of the matter is that the piece that's missing is that you, you're not, you're not hit, tapping into meaning. You're sure. not tapping into what either you're not creative enough. You're not creating anything that's you really feel like is yours or you're not, you're not in a creative mindset that you're actually producing something. I think that does help people to really, you know, feel better and, and feel like they're actually progressing. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I've fallen in love so much with podcasting because it allows for connection. And also I've, I've had the blessing you probably had the same experience of talking to people who have, I guess in that way, nobody has ever paid attention to them in that way. Does that make sense? Like people who I love talking to people who have never been on a podcast before, right? Like I can give uh, the example of someone that I had on my podcast, Magali, um, shout out Magali, by the way. So she had never done a podcast. She had never done anything. And so she did it. She was super nervous. She was sweating ever. But you know, after that now, now she does zoom trainings. Now she does like, she was on TV, like all this stuff where, where people just have to realize that, that they are interesting, Yeah. that they have a story that they, and there's so many, like you say, average, average Joe's people that you'd, you'd see them at the supermarket, you see them at the PTA meeting, but they have a story. And when you sit them down and you say, Hey, I want to hear your story. Incredible things happen. Yeah. And I think that that's where the fulfillment comes in a lot of times is when we make these connections with people that we, we know that they actually walked away feeling heard or special or 
significant. Yeah. And I think, wow, we, we want to do more of that in this world, right? We want to create more of that. Yeah, for sure. And so when we were having our prep call, you were, you were also mentioning another perk to being a podcaster is that we learn too. So we learn from our guests. So you were sharing some really cool concepts, things that you have learned from your guests. So share a couple of the most impactful things that you have learned from your guests and how you have applied those to make yourself better. Okay. So, oh man, this, this is a great question because I only have, technically speaking, I have 25 episodes. So mm. I'm young in podcasting, technically speaking, like I, I don't have all this age old wisdom, but I love to listen to my own podcast. I enjoy listening to what people share because they've shared such amazing things. So one of my friends, her name is Holly Banfield, and she was in my first seven episodes that I did. And she's one of my best friends. And she, um, she taught a concept about love that I think has just empowered me in many different ways. And at the time I was single and she would talk about the person in a relationship who loves the most um, is the one who gives the relationship its capacity to fly, for okay. it to prosper, yeah. right? For it to be successful. Yeah. But the person who loves the least has the most control, has the most power. Okay. And so she talked about the, the decision that we make to either love first and love the most versus to have the power mm -hmm. and how um, and how that creates different results in our lives as a result. And if we go into things with a with a full heart and if we go to th go into things um, without that kind of a mindset and how it can really restrict us because we're not really open, we're not really ready to receive. And it does like open us up to more potential joy and pain. But I think that that concept just really has stuck with me and I've loved it. And then I also have um, one of my friends, her motto is like, uh, no better time than now. And she just lives that. I mean, she has three young boys. Her name's Andrea um, Holmquist McKee. And she has she builds, she's building her own. She has her own little business called Sweat Seat. And it's like you wear, you put this seat over your little, you know, chair or whatever. And it, I mean, in your, in your car so that yeah. you don't put your sweaty self on it. And if you do hot yoga, oh. that is very helpful, Yo, by the I way. Need one of those. <laughs> no, seriously. And it's so like compact. So I can just put it you on and then like, on. and then I can pull it off and then just put it in my wash door it. and wash it or whatever, or put it back on. Cause I hey, love that. Cause we go to boxing class and you're drenched. You are drenched that. and it's gross. You're like, I have like cloth, especially like, if you don't have like yeah. leather seats. And I don't know. And even then it's still kind of just That's feels a smart gross. idea. Yeah. Anyway, so she's built this, this company, but she also has three boys and she just went to Dubai and she has an eight month year old child and two other young children, like four, I mean, and two years old. And I just think you're a hero. Like you don't let anything stop you. You're just a person who's going to like go for it. You know what I mean? And so seeing these people live this out. Also, I had a person who taught me about, um, so spiritual and and just like literacy in general so dewan coombs she is a professor at byu and she is my running partner and she's also just like a phenomenal person she's extremely intelligent but one of the things i adore about her is that she understands the importance of if you're not literate your world is really limited like what you can do the way you view the world everything i mean how can you really access is certain you just can't access everything if you can't if you're not literate right like literacy is just like the door to so many opportunities that we just take for granted like ah you can read that you can function in this world like without really thinking about think about how much you're blessed by the fact that you can read and that you can Thousand function percent. do you know what i mean just things like that like so grateful um i've also had I mean, I've had some really intimate moments with people like you, where they really open up to you. Um, Greg Marshall, he came on after he did the marketing portion for the podcast coalition. And when I asked him the question about like how neighbors in his life have impacted him, I mean, he just got choked up about the whole idea of like, I've just been so blessed by the people in my life who've just helped me to grow enormously. And just even his dreams about how he wanted to stay in this really fancy hotel in California. And he literally slept in his car in that parking lot and then told himself one day I'm going to be staying in there. And like within a, like a couple years, he was in that, in that hotel staying wow. there. Stuff like that. that you're just like, that is such a beautiful and inspiring story. But and I have my friend, Catherine Elaine Mitchell, who's just so 
Mitchell Murphy, sorry, Catherine, Elaine Mitchell Murphy. And she is just one of those people who's so real. She's like, what's wrong with being average? You know, like she's the person who's <laughs> like, why is everybody trying to be like, you got to be the best. You got to be. But she's like, what about people who have time for people? Like we need to be better at having time for our neighbors and for the people in our lives. If we're so busy, then how can we make sure that people are OK? And I just think she is profound. That. She's I profound. That. I mean, and like she talks about her marriage in such an honest way. I feel like she talks about it in like, oh, you know what I just did? I just manipulated you. She'll call out her <laughs> own behavior and say like, I manipulated you and that's not okay. Right. And I shouldn't have done that. And you get to decide. It's your choice. And I'm not going to try to um, like, you know, emotionally just make it difficult for you yeah. to decide. So I feel like I mean, I could go on, I feel like, about how many people I've learned from, but one of my friends, Kendall Christensen, he came on and he is just a like lifelong learner. He's one of those people who, he goes somewhere and he's taking notes the entire time and then he's categorizing them and he has this whole system in Evernote that's incredible. <laughs> like, it's just insane because you talk to him and he will pull up a quote on the dime and yeah. you just, you feel constantly edified and educated in his presence. And I just feel like, listening to his podcast is like drinking from a water like from a fire hose it is it really is but it is like the show notes on that took me two hours really? i mean wow. that's how intense it took me so long to just like make sure i had everything, everything correct done. all the things that the books that he recommended and different things but really so profound so in and he one of his big things that he taught is that you know to everyone says like this phrase this cliche phrase like do your best be your best kind of a thing and he's like no that's not good enough. Like you, if you really have a problem in your life, you need to address the problem and get yourself educated. Go to the library, check out a book. If you're struggling with emotional control, somebody else has struggled with that. How have they found a solution that's actually helped them go find that information? And so for me, when I found out like, wow, why did I just like become uh, why did I just burst out emotionally at my parents for that, you know, or whatever. And I'm, and then it's like, oh, this person mentioned this podcast, the full cup, which is amazing, by the way, that bot, that podcast is blowing my mind right now, but it's a podcast about, you know, how do we take care of the things that are ours and how do we, um, emotionally basically take care of ourselves so that we're not projecting it onto other people and like messing with them and saying like, oh, and it's, he teaches something, the concept of like the steering wheel and how you have your mom's uh, mom's hand on the steering wheel and your dad and your sister and your best friend and all these people. And you're trying to drive your car and you're like, this is, okay. this is just impossible. And until you are like, okay, this is a limo and everybody's in the back of the limo and I'm putting <laughs> up the window so that I'm the person on the steering wheel. It's a great analogy. You know, it's a great analogy. I mean, things like that, but it's like, I got, it's because I went seeking. Of course. So for a problem that I have, a, you know, that I problem that I'm like, oh wait, why did I do that? How am I gonna figure that out? The only way I can figure that out is by like learning and, and, and seeking after information. So he just basically teaches the concept that you can't just not care. You, you have, like, if you wanna grow, you yeah. have to invest in yourself. For sure. And I feel like that is such a common problem, especially if you take it like on an, on an emotional level, we can just say, oh, I'm sad. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm angry, but why? Right. And really trying to understand why is phenomenal. So guys, does this sound like Trace has been podcasting for like 15 years? Isn't that crazy? And you have 25 episodes, yeah. you know, so just, and that's why I think you're so extraordinary because the ability to learn from others is a gift. Not everybody has that. The ability to absorb positive energy and then pass that on is also a gift. And so, you know, just in these 25 episodes, 25 conversations, you can tell that you've grown tremendously as a human being. So I commend you for that. And, you know, you told the story of Steph going to your house for four hours and helping you. Now, I'm sure that you'd be willing to do the exact same thing for, for somebody I else. I am literally doing it right now. Like because right? of Steph's example, <clears throat> one of my friends is struggling with depression and you know what I do with her? I get on the phone and we journal together. Like we get on the call and I'm just like, you need to take care of some stuff here and we are going to do it right now together. Or I hold her accountable. Like I have another friend who's sending me pictures of herself every day because we're both doing a fashion challenge thing or we're we're becoming a cognizant of what we own. Oh my gosh, you guys, by the way, super fun. You should do it. Talk so, to us about that. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about it. Like, I, <laughs> Tell me about that. I am so excited that about it because cool. 
it's kind of like Ray is here, you guys. Ray is, you know, you everyone knows who Ray is, right? Does everyone yes. know? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah so, they do. She's my podcast producer. Yeah, so Ray is just awesome. But I walked in here and Ray has black, half black and half like bleached, bleached on one side and black. So just like Cruella. If you've she's, seen the movie Cruella, she, and she was Cruella for a, a Christmas, yeah. for a Halloween Christmas party. For a Christmas party. Christmas party. I'm sorry, for the <laughs> Halloween party. Anyway, and I was just thinking, I was like, Ray is like totally a fashionista and she's very like, very she, is, fast. she is so fashionista. But you look at these like, you become aware. So this is like a practice because I am a naturally lazy person. Like most of us, like all of us can relate to laziness in some level, but I'm definitely lazy about like clothing and like trying to look my best. And so I was as well. Yeah. But what I've learned is that my friend, she is really good at fashion. And so I was like, you know what? I have a problem. I am not very good at this and I don't like to prioritize it like I just would rather forget about it right just throw on yeah just throw on whatever like make it happen doesn't matter and I said but I really want to do better and I'm like she's already a life coach style person she already has so much training in life coaching I said well what if we like mesh that together with your your style and so she's like you can use me I'll be your <laughs> guinea pig let's try it out yeah. right and so we had a first preliminary call and she like we went through all these questions like you know, why is it that you don't care? Like, why don't you care? And I was like, well, because it requires effort. It's time. I see it as wasteful. Sometimes I see it as like, I'm becoming too worldly. So like, there's all these different vanity, stories, vanity, like and, and also just like money. It requires money. It and she was like, well, I'm like the Actually. ultimate bargain <laughs> shopper. And I can teach you how to like, really dress well and not spend that much money like yeah. if you have a budget anyway so we just she just started to like teach me some of these things but we we started to drill down to what is really going on right the belief system that i have and then she said this next week your assignment is to take a picture of yourself every outfit so like pajamas um so whatever you're wearing that Everything. day pajamas your <laughs> workout clothes i mean there was one day where i was like covered in dirt because my husband and i laid sod on a yeah. house that he's doing and so I was literally like, I had pulled those pieces of sod. I was like, I'm super woman. And I had like this green jacket on and there was dirt all over it, you know, whatever. And I was like taking a picture. I'm like feeling strong. I'm like not looking my best, but like I'm tough. You know Love what I mean? And it's it. because it. of what I did. And we, I mean, but I, every outfit I would analyze, I would say how I felt when I was wearing it. And it just made me aware of what I was doing. So I started to be more conscious, right? right. So like I, I started to try to, I'm like, oh, I like that shirt actually. Oh, and I like that one. And I'm like, I'm going to wear that one and I'm going to wear that. Yeah. And I became more intentional, shocking again, intention matters, right? Yes. But like, anyway, I went through this and I did it. This is just this past week that I did that activity. And I was like, I cannot believe how much fun I'm having. Like, this is so much fun just to like become aware how much I dislike that and how much I love that and how much I have no emotion about that and just Isn't becoming aware. And then seeing the gaps in my like wardrobe. I'm like, oh my word, there are like way big gaps in my wardrobe. Anyway, super fun, by the way, just like super, super fun. And then the next step right now is we're doing an inventory of my clothing. So I'm like creating an inventory of all the things I have. <laughs> so cool. And you guys like, how fun is this? Like who doesn't love to become aware of like how they're dressing themselves and then become empowered by that? I just think it's insane how, how cool it has been. And so I have, as a result of that, when I go places, I'm like, I got ready. I, I got ready. You feel good. I did it. And I'm like, and some people I think I still feel good. I can still feel like I'm showing up, but there's been a few times lately where I've been like, I really, it does make a difference to feel like you're ready. And I, and I think that that is why, and people have talked about this before. Like we want to be our best selves. We want to dress the part, but I'm like, it's not just dressing the part. It's about liking what you're dressing. Like that. it's liking yourself in those clothes and being like, oh, you don't like it, David, my husband. Too bad, <laughs> too bad, so sad, I like it. You know, I mean, whatever, I have this yeah. pirate, what I call the pirate shirt, and yeah. I love the pirate shirt, by he the way. He hates your pirate shirt. He's like, you kind of look like a pirate in <laughs> that shirt. And let's I'm dive like, into that a little thing, bit though, though. Is that I'm like the person who's like, so it's what? Okay, right? Like, cool, I love this shirt, and I'm gonna keep on wearing it. I love that, I wanna, I wanna dive into that a little bit, because yeah. I feel like uh, your perspectives seem so natural, but they are extremely rare. I'll tell you right now, 
having hundreds of interviews, it is extremely rare. So how do you, because what most people will do is they will base their self image on someone else. So I can tell you right now, like if a whole bunch of people, if they wear a shirt and their husband's like, that's an ugly shirt, they're done. Like they're, that, that, that is crushing, right? Or if somebody else says something, why? Because their, their, their self-image or their self-esteem is based on the opinions of others. And maybe the reason why they would do an activity like that is to be liked more by others, but it's all externally based. So the motivation is always external. In your case, it seems like it's all internal. Totally. How do you get there? And I think that's a big question. And the reason why I think that's such a big question is because I think there are many roads to Rome. And I think that people have gotten there through many different ways. And I would say it's it's a stacking principle that there's many things you can do to help yourself be like, does it make Tracy happy? Does it make Tony happy? Is is Am I happy right now with this? And right now I'm doing a lot of work around this. And so I think it's like, I'm very cognizant, but I would say, first off from that podcast I'm listening to called the full cup. He talks about how he's in the change business. He helps people change. Right. And technically speaking, what he's sharing is that you have to learn how to take care of you and you have to use the savior, which is what I believe. So like Jesus and me together, we nurture Tracy. And if we're doing it together, then everybody else's stuff, and this is kind of like the You Are Special book, right? Sure. The stars and the dots, what start happening? They no longer start sticking. Mm. Because you are like, I love my pirate shirt. And nobody can tell me differently without me knowing that it makes me happy. Love it. And I think even the closest people, my mom or my husband or my, you know, whoever it may be who might say something honestly, because it's not their style. It's not their preference. But I think that for me, it's more of a like, but I know it makes me happy. Sure. And so if I'm really, if I'm really secure in that, I think it's easier to just stay true to yourself in those moments and not go into the like, oh, and now I need to get rid of this. And like, and, and the insecurities that are around that. And, and maybe it's because lately I've been seeing people who do their own thing. I'm like, they're doing it. They are doing it. And I don't think they're doing it for anybody but themselves. Right. Like I can just tell it's from the inside out. And that is just so inspiring. It's it always inspiring. And I think what you do, for example, if you had an experience when you go to your like younger self, like, Younger Tony, who was a child, and when he was a child, he got made fun of for his nose. I don't know. I'm yeah. just being like, or your eyebrows or something, like something that somebody made fun of you for. And you go to that boy, and you, and you see him in your mind's eye, and then you bring him to you, and you hug him. And you hug that lot, like the inner child, right? Yeah. And then you bring in the Savior, and you say, I always am going to love you. Like this love is never going to end yeah. and this love is always going to be here and we're always going to be here for each other. This is our, this is our circle. It doesn't mean not hard things aren't going to happen. It means that there's always going to be this circle of trust, which means that you can come back here and be reminded who you are. And that's the same, I think with the, you are special, the stars and the dots. It's like these things stop sticking so much because we're like, Oh, wait, this is between me and God anyway, right? This is the whole like Mother Teresa quote, right? Do you know the Mother Teresa quote? This is one of my favorites. She has a ton of great she ones. She has such a great ones. And I, <laughs> I, I really don't want to like, I don't want to not say this properly because it's like so powerful yeah. for everyone to hear. But, um, no, I think, I, I think that is, that is so important to, to be able to take a step back and analyze yourself and realize that even if you have shortcomings or there are things that you're not happy with, it doesn't have to define you. You don't have to stay there. Right. Right. And I, I'm going to read this because it's just so pertinent, but she, and this particular, she says, people are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. 
be honest and frank anyway. When you spend years building someone, um, building, someone can destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, they may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. Give your best anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it is between you and your God. It was never between you and them anyway. I love that. And I, that. I just feel like, and also I would say this is not like an easy thing to overcome. I feel like I've done a lot of other things. So like, I'm not, and I'm not arrived. I haven't arrived. I'm in the process right now of really, but I like, I do morning pages like where I write in my journal and I write out a lot of stuff and I've just found so much power in journaling. Like I cannot overemphasize if you like at all have ever done that in your past or you are doing that, like journaling is so powerful it is so powerful just to become aware of what you're thinking and get it on a page and be like uh is that true is that absolutely 100 percent true and like use byron katie's questions which are like the questions of truth like is it true okay maybe maybe there is some truth is it 100 percent true and you're almost going to always get a no. no do you see what i mean like there's always going to be some level of like well there there is this story or this is the thing that's like anyway so i would just say that's a complex question and there's lots of levels to it, but I would really say like, I put things, I do power statements, I meditate, I read books, I talk to God, I help people. Like I do lots of things yeah. in my life. And then like when I have real, a lot of garbage happening in here, which happens, I try to get it on a piece of paper. And like, I do sometimes, this is not always, but I will write it out and then I'll burn it up. Right. And like, yeah. let it burn and well, like watch those yeah, things Yeah, for go sure. Up. Because I think that the, the underlying, uh, I think principle is be, be willing to try things, right? So if you, if I'm here sitting across from you and you say, Hey, I'm journaling, right. For me to have that, that openness to say, Hey, maybe I'll try that too. Right. Or right. just to, to absorb powerful information and then try stuff. Right. And also I'm going to record, I'm going to record myself in my car on my way home. And I'm just going to talk out all the stuff. That's like the conversations I'm having in my head. I'm going to talk them out. And then I'm, if I want to, I can re-listen, but I probably just needed to get it out. Just get it out. You know what I mean? Or whatever it may be. So I guess I'm, I'm a huge proponent of that. And also I will say, this is like my, my, my tip that I was going to give earlier (laughs) that I didn't, that I think is super important, but it's like, what is the number one thing you can do today to make your life better like what is the number one thing and and ponder it like think about it and receive either inspiration or your own self telling you what you need to do Mm -hmm. and then what is the number one thing you could stop doing to most improve your life and i guarantee you will have something come to you if you really sit down and think about those two things and i can tell you i just did this today i did this exercise but i did it for my marriage so i said what's the number one thing i can do to improve my marriage and i had a thought and like and then i did the same thing but i also did this for my life and the thing was like what's the one thing i can start doing my number one thing i can start doing is literally stop is is finding more opportunities to present myself so i'm just like i've got to present myself more i've got to find ways to present myself and so i've just that's something i'm looking for And have I done a ton on it? No, but I tried to go to Toastmasters. It didn't work out because they weren't, the chapter didn't exist anymore. I was like, okay, let's figure that out. But you went. But I went. And so that's a win. That's a victory. It's a celebration, right? Because I'm still in that path. But the the other, the thing I was supposed to stop is quit touching your phone when you're bored. That was my, that was my other one. And so, I mean, whatever it is, like you're going to get something. We've all got. And all of us can like look inside of ourselves and be like, what's something I can quit? What's something I can start? And this is all because I've been doing the Brooke Snow Creation Coach program right now. And so I'm, I'm finishing that up. And so I've been doing a lot of this learning and educating myself on how I can coach other people. And so I coached Steph this week. We had a coaching session. Oh, really? Yeah. And it was super fun. We talked about. Isn't that crazy though? How you went from student to coach? Yeah, you know, and, oh. you know and, and, and that's why I think it's such a valuable concept because everything that you're that you're talking about points to the presence of mental health or the pursuit of mental health, which right now I think is such a tremendous topic. It's so important. And like you said, there's so many different ways to go about it. But until you put yourself out there and try these things, guys, you don't know what works for you. So different things work for different people. But what I love about you is that you're willing to try anything. Like if it works for someone, let's give it a shot. Let's do it for a week. Let's let's see where this goes, right? And maybe you'll discover something. Maybe it's not for you. But the the ability and the willingness to try, 
I think is, is what makes all the difference. Amen. And I honestly think like I, my friend just barely released her own self-published book called the lead kindly light prayer journal. And it's to help people write out their prayers. Amazing. I tried it out and I was like, this is incredible. I cannot tell you how cool this was. Like things like that, like look, if you have a problem, like why is it a problem and, and see if there's something you can do. And it doesn't have to be huge. It could be like really little. Do you know what I mean? And so I feel like the easier you make it, the more you're going to attain it. Right. But if you, so, and those little things can stack, they can really help you get closer to your goals. They so do. they do 1000%. Tracy, this has been an incredible episode. Honestly, I think and I'm going to say this right now, we need a part two. Oh, right? I would because, so love it. Because there, there is, there's so much there talking about everything that, that you touched on, I think could be an hour long conversation, right? And so guys, what, what I would invite you to do is to, to really try to be like Tracy. And <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I try to be like Tracy, you know, <laughs> so because I see you and you know, I don't, I, I don't know you on a, on a very personal level. Just what we've seen in the right. coalition. I listen to your show, but just having that willingness to to help, that smile on your face. You know, there. When you go through life, guys, you you'll you'll run into people. Ray is this way, and Tracy is is this way. That when they walk into a room, you feel it. Like something, it something changes for good or bad, right? If you guys are in a bad mood. It's like, uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> My you, husband would agree. You can just feel it, right? <laughs> There's just very strong energies. Right. And w when people like that can take their energy and use it for good, they become extremely powerful. And so, Tracy, I commend you for the growth that, that you've had in the time that I've known you from just being that, that timid, young, doubtful podcaster that took that mic set home to the person that is sitting across from you today. So I appreciate you. I thank you for being here. And I'll ask you the question that I ask all of my guests. What are your top three tips for someone, and you've touched a lot on this, but your top three tips for someone who is feeling the way you were feeling at that first coalition meeting? One, show up. Go to the place you said you were going to go. Do not quit on yourself. <laughs> One, keep the promises you make to yourself. That alone will transform your life. If you can make commitments to yourself and keep them. Uh, two, ask for help. And I mean, tell your best friend, I am not going to edit this podcast unless you hold me accountable can we like jump on a call at this time or can you come over and we can do something and I'll be, we'll both do it together or just find a way to get accountability in your life. I cannot, I didn't even talk about accountability, but it's accountability is like one of my number one most important features in my life that makes me help, like helps me to do things. I'm very, very impacted by that. And then three, I would say, Come intentionally, be intentional about what you do. When you show up somewhere, even if you didn't wear your best clothes, y'all, <laughs> you come and you say, I know I make a difference in the world. I know Tracy is a powerful force for good. And therefore, I'm going to show up as my best self right now. I'm going to be like, hey, what's up? Who are you? Welcome, whatever. And when you are intentional about how you show up, even when you show up to the dentist, even when you show up to the grocery store, if you're intentional about it, people notice. They do. And so you can spread a lot, you can spread a lot of good in a little bit of time. That's all. You can. Guys, this has been episode number 61 of the Ask Tony Show. Follow Tracy. Tracy, tell us about your podcast. Where can people find you? Uh, the name of your podcast, because I guarantee you a lot of people are going to want to know more about you. So how can my audience... Become yeah, your so audience. my podcast is the Thy Neighbor podcast, and it's a little blue square with a red jacket girl, and that's me. And then it uh, like it, subscribe, whatever, do, do those like do follow it. me. Thank you so much. <laughs> I am so grateful. And then uh, I am at Tracy D Robbins, so it's T R E C Y D R O B B I N S on Instagram, and then Tracy Robbins King on Facebook. And then also my podcast is found on Stitcher, uh, Podbean, Spotify, and iTunes. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much. Until next time, Tracy. Thank you so much, Tony.
I'm going to like look this up, by the way, someday and just like listen to you telling me all the positive things so that I can remember. This is like such a treasure to me. Thanks so much for the good positive no, things you said. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming, Tracy. <laughs>